Welcome back to Gunther's Rug Factory. His goal today was to build a functional sliding door, an elevator and a production line for the materials that will be used to create rugs with. Initially he wanted to make a sliding door that simply slides to the left or right, but to Gunther that seemed a bit too easy and his workers would find a way to sabotage it. What he decided to do was to make a door that slides out of the wall and rotates to the side. This would bring great confusion and mystery to his workers who would just accept the door as it is and they wouldn't try to fuck with it too much. To do this he needed to build a piston and since this planet only has these rotating bearings his only choice was creating a set of bearings that would move the door forward and back. This might fuck your brains so pay attention. The bearings are set on three different blocks that are connected to the door. The rotations of these bearings needs to be as you see now, 90, 180 and then 90 degrees again. This rotates the bearings in a way where the final bearing doesn't actually rotate but move the blocks attached to it. To add the rotation of the door itself, another bearing needs to be on the connecting point between the sliding part of the door and the actual door itself. The rotation of this bearing needs to also be 90 degrees, but it should rotate during the second turn, not while the first three are pushing the door. The final result gives a nice sliding and rotating door, but as you can see something is shitting the door up. The space above it needs to be empty, because the rotation needs extra freedom on top of the door. What is also a potential problem is the fact that when the door slides out, there is an extra block of space between the wall and the door. This is mostly just annoying. The door is ready for usage, but as I mentioned the last time, it is not possible to connect two switches to one controller, which makes it slightly difficult to control the door from both sides of the wall. The only way to fix this problem is to use additional controllers and sensor triggers. Pay attention again, this is gonna be fucked. He created a platform inside the room and placed three controllers like this. He put a sensor in between the two controllers on the sides and then put one block after one controller and two blocks after the other. After putting bearings and more blocks onto those bearings, he connected them to the controllers. The movable blocks needed to be adjusted at an angle so they are close to the sensor but not triggering it. In Gunther's design it was 45 degrees, despite it saying 60 that was wrong. So in the end the two controllers on the sides are connected to the bearings on their parts of the design. The sensor is connected to the third controller. This third controller should be connected to the bearings that are pushing and rotating the door. In order to properly control the door he added a switch and connected it to the first controller on the side. Pressing this switch opens the door, even though the controller that is connected to the switch is not the controller that controls the door. Gunther started to get the urge to take some heroin so he doesn't lose his mind, but he added a switch on the outside, which actually didn't work, because in order to open the door, the inner switch needs to be on, and when that switch is on, the sensor is blocked by it, and the outer switch simply can't ever work. The only way he could fix that was by adding a trigger that is only temporary, such as the sensor. So he put one sideways which ended up being a stupid fucking idea because the door itself was triggering it and there you have it, endless loop of half openings. He got rid of the sensor for now and noticed how something messed up the bearings. He started removing them and the door lost its mind, it clearly needed some heroin. Gunther tried to fix it, but the shitty door was completely broken, he had to delete and build it again. This time he placed the sensor facing the other side of the room and it worked pretty nicely. After doing the same thing on the outside, the door was fully functional. Basically the door will always be closed and it will open only when someone is standing near the sensors. In order to add a genetic mark to the sensors and optimize them for the slave workers, he passed through the door using the sensor a few thousand times. He wasn't really proud or amazed by his creation, he just needed that genetic marker on the sensors. Next thing that he needed in his factory was an elevator leading to the white room. The principle is the same as with the door, just this time no rotations and it goes up and not on the side. Look at this glorious design. He created the elevator platform and placed the switch on the inner side. Doing this allows everyone to use this single switch both from the brick room and the white room. He fucked up the rotation in the controller and this happened. Make sure to always pay attention to your rotations, otherwise your balls will get twisted and you'll end up having to visit the doctor. To prevent accidents he also put a nice orange fence around the platform which ended up covering the switch from the upper side. Placing it a bit higher fixed everything. Gunther had a sliding and rotating door and an elevator. The rug factory is starting to be. However, it can't ever truly be unless there is something powering it. The mystical power that fills the bodies of this planet will need a sacrifice, because such a factory cannot operate at the highest level without a sacrifice. The sacrificial room is down here in the concrete basement. 
Gunther built yet another piston, but this one is slightly different because it doesn't just move up, it moves to the left as well. The only difference is the rotations, he adjusted them so the platform moves with the bearings up and left. You probably wonder what does this have to do with the sacrifice and what is he even supposed to sacrifice? If you remember, Gunther eats plants to stay alive, he has an incredible need for plants. This is because the mystical power giving him all these building abilities runs on plants. He consumes additional plants because he is the factory owner, but the factory itself will need even more power. This platform cooks vegetables that are automatically consumed by the planet, which then gives the factory the ability to produce the best drugs. To cook them, thrusters are used, of course. Gunther replaced the brick platform with the ventilation blocks, so the heat can effectively get to the vegetables. Once one crate has been cooked and consumed, the second one takes its place, and thanks to the nice design, it is easy to add more crates onto the platform when it is necessary. The sacrificial room is separated with a metal wall and door. The middle of the room has a bunch of generators for classic power. Since this room was quite below the brick one, another elevator was necessary. The same design as before, a bunch of bearings pushing a platform up and down. The switch controlling the platform is here, in this very convenient position, so it can be pressed from both levels. This elevator has a blue fence, and that, along with the striped platform, indicate that only Gunther can use it. He also put a boot on top of the switch. This shows dominance and automatically prevents the slave workers from messing with it. Before going to sleep, he needed to create a production line, where the materials will be tested to make sure nothing is wrong with them. The first section of the line runs on wheels. These wheels are connected to electrical engines from the cement room, and their purpose is to make an imprint on the material, which will make that material an official part of Gunther rug factory. Due to the pretty large design of this machinery, Gunther had to delete the ceiling, so he has enough space to work with. Turns out the building items are not suitable for midgets. The second part is a standard line that carries the materials through the testing area. In order to give an extra push to the materials, he manufactured a device that would kick them. This is the so-called pre-boot test. A controller moves a bearing connected to a boot that is triggered by a sensor. The testing area is made out of striped blocks that are always very scary to the workers, it is definitely the best block to use to maintain control in the rug factory. But it is important not to overdo it, because nobody wants workers so scared that they don't want to work. The end of the line contains a small lifting mechanism that is activated by a sensor, and that sensor activates only if the materials have successfully completed the boot test. The full boot test is done within the striped area with a lever that drops and heavily kicks the materials. If the materials survive, they pass the test. The test is triggered yet again with a sensor. Finally, let's see how the boot test functions. First, the materials are dropped onto the wheels, which are the starting point of the line. The switch on the wall activates the entire machine. After the materials get marked with the wheels, the pre-boot test gets activated and slightly pushes them further. They slowly get into the boot testing area and the sensor activates the test. The materials are kicked, and in case they survive, another sensor raises the lift, which indicates that the materials are ready to be carried to the white room. Gunther will soon be ready to bring life to his factory, he still needs to add the rug creating machines in the white room and a facility that will test the created rugs. Thanks for watching, and let me know how would you rate the current development of the rug factory on a scale from carrots to cucumbers. I have been Petard, your glorious lord, and may the blessings of Petardia eternally touch your butt.